is up, everybody? How's everyone doing? How you doing, Michael? I'm good, Gabe. How you doing, brother? I, you know, I feel like a stranger around here. I, I don't think I've, I haven't been on the show for like three weeks almost. I know exactly. Right, right. It Didn't I, I miss? I know for sure I missed last week's show because you guys did an awesome job with Stephen and Carla. Um, yeah. And then the week before, we didn't. I don't know. Did we? I'm like, I already forgot. No, we did, we, did, we did the Rogue Five Canteen on Sunday. That's right, but we didn't do one on Saturday. So, yeah, so it has been three weeks. Man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, time flies lately, you know? It's crazy. It's it's crazy, man. Yes. Um, well, how's everybody doing? Looks yeah, like- welcome on a, another Saturday night. Thanks for your, for your evening. Um, hey, uh, so... To, to uh, our brother Yens, huh? How, how, how oh, there you go. Boom! Oh, where's you got? Where's the sunglasses? You get the I sunglasses. know exactly. <laughs> I make this shirt look good. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, good uh, to see everybody, though, for sure. Yeah, man, dude, I love I love how that ATAT looks behind you, man, with the little the little chicken walker on the bottom. Isn't it crazy? That looks great. It looks like it's just floating there, and it's crazy to see how big this thing is. Jeez. Yeah. You would never realize it's that big. Yeah, it's crazy, huh? Damn. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, I love that thing. Wow. Um, well, let's let's say I know people are, are Yeah, let's introduce say hello to in, you know, they um let's Say hi to some of the people that are jumping in. Yes. Got Anna. Hello. Hello, Anna. We got Jump in general. What's up? How you doing, man? Thank you. Good to see you. Dynamic Menace. Yeah. Dan, what's up, man? Good to see you. Got Jose in the house. What's up, Jose? Hmm. Star Wars Addict, 88, not to be confused. Um, we got Brad in the house. What's up, Brad? Hey, good to see you, buddy. Got Rogue Five Cantina. What's up? We got Sean in the house. What's up, Sean? How you doing, man? Good to see you, Sean, for sure. We got Steven and Carla in the house. What's up? We got Scott. Jumping in right now. We what got all of that in the house. Hey, buddy, what's up? So, man, there's 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 some things to talk about this week. A lot of things, yeah. I know, man. Are we going to be controversial tonight, or are we going to keep things? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how the night goes. Right. Hey. We'll see, we'll see right. if we we're we're getting. <laughs> we need more viewers. <laughs> I know exactly. Right. Exactly. No. Hey, uh, hey, hey let, let's just start out by I'm going to ask you first off, Roadhouse. Have you seen the original Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze? Um, like it's not in my memory, so I guess not. No. There's another controversial. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's a hot take right there. Roadhouse. No, I, I don't think. I, well, wait. Give me. Give me the plot. Maybe it'll come to me. Give me. He's a bouncer. He goes to a small little rural town. It's a kick-ass movie, you know. What I mean, it's a, you know. Anyway, he goes. There's some good actors in there, and it's. I don't know. It's kind. Of, it's kind of. I don't know how to put it, but it. It's gone down. It's a. It's a damn good movie. You know, it was in the late '80s when it came out, and uh, good bands in there. It's got a good soundtrack. Do you, you know who Jeff Healy is? Mm, let me, it, he, 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 he was blind. He passed away, but um, but he was a badass blind player. He could play the guitar really good. Oh, nice. stuff. It was awesome. But yeah, it was just a good soundtrack. But anyway, they had all this stuff going on about the new Roadhouse, you know, and um, I was looking forward to it. Um, and it's out finally. There was a lot of the, the director was like boycotting it and saying, forget it, you know, if it can't be played in the movie theaters. You know, he's you know, and I get that side of things for sure because everything's going to streaming, right? 
right? Oh, it's not in the movies. It's it's, it's, it's not in the movies. movies. And he fought it. I mean, he didn't go to the movie premiere at the yeah at the the deal on it because he was pissed. He was fighting them. Well, yeah. Well, remember, like, remember back in the day, if it was a straight to V or VHS movie, that meant it's like a shitty movie. Remember that? Like, yeah, it's like if it went straight, it was like a part three of some random movie, right? Like. Straight Scott, that's going to be another topic, by the way. We'll be talking about that later today. Because <laughs> I think it just very well might be in the world that we live in. And there's there's that big solar eclipse coming your way, Michael. So, Dude, you would not believe. I mean, literally, people are coming to Bernie, Texas, yeah. and right out skirts of Bernie. I mean, dude, hotels are booked. It, it's just, yeah. it's unbelievable. Dude, it's a big deal, man. Like, it's it's all over. It's all over. The The... The overlords at NASA are promoting it everywhere. Well, they don't, <laughs> they don't have anything else going on. <laughs> their, their crew, their crew is off. You know, for the for the spring break. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a, a, a production budget together, and I'm gonna create a. Uh, I'm gonna start with Elon Musk talking about the moon landing. And can I, I can I, I I need to like like flash a little a little sign here be like Gabe at Star Wars replicas is not does not promote this this topic so I don't get canceled okay uh, enough said <laughs> oh man uh, what's up Marcel how you doing Marcel hey good to see you buddy hey um, so we'll get back to the roadhouse thing but I just gotta say Whoever was in the chat last week, I don't know if they're in the chat right now or not, but I thank you for, I mentioned the movie Rad. We were talking about Rad for some reason. And um, dude, he said, they said that it's going to be coming out soon. Mm -hmm. And I saw on Instagram, there's posting that it was going to be the official Rad Day, which was March 21st, whatever, um, I think it was Thursday. And um, dude, I had never seen the movie Rad before. Never saw it, and I know Gabe has not seen it. We Gabe hasn't seen it. No, I that one I actually have, and but again, look, man, like I don't remember half of the stuff that I watched it because it might have been only once, right? Mm. Yeah, but that yeah. one, that one does, that one seems more familiar to me because of the BMX, right? It's the BMX yeah. movie, right? Yes, yeah. And what's really cool, you know, what it is if you kind of had to like the synopsis of it, it's almost like Rocky. With with in with BMX because um, it's like this this kid that doesn't have a chance against these pro teams that come to his little text town and and he gets involved with them and he's like the the little engine that could and yep. you know it, but what was so cool about it is number one I had never seen it before hey, right no. so going in to uh, this deal it was like going back in time seeing all the old BMX bikes. Seeing all the other girls and how they wear wore their shorts and yeah, you know it's kind of funny. Tell you, uh, tell you how do you say your name? Tell you Shire, Rocky's wife, Adrian. Oh yeah, yeah, she's the mom in there. Oh yeah, and the girl from Full House is in there. But it, See, it was just I, it, seen that. I knew I had seen that. But you know what? It, watching it because there was a, a couple little cheesy parts when they're dancing with the bicycle thing. But it was cool, though. I, I was, like, I ordered it. I came home, I found it on Blu-ray, and I ordered it. I, I was excited about it, you know? No. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. But that was that was a really cool deal to, to go and see, you know, that movie in the movie theaters, yeah. you know? So. Well, well, speaking of movie theaters, I had my a first experience um, with one of these new 4DX theaters. Have you heard of those, Michael? I have. I, I there were, it said 4DX in the theater I was in, but I didn't know what that meant. Yeah, so dude, okay, so like the only way I could describe it is like, you know, you know when you go to a theme park and you like sit on the chairs and you're watching a film and like the chairs moving along. Oh yeah, with oh yeah, yeah. Like Star Tours or like anything like that. It's like that. It's, oh. it's but it's that aggressive. It's like. Boom, boom, like just moves back and forth, side to side. Wow. There's smoke coming out, like of the front of the theater. It's like there's Damn. snow. It starts snowing in the movie theater. Like it's pretty. Oh, it spits water at you. It's like, 
Oh, like, it's badass. Yeah, like it's a whole experience. And we got invited to go watch the Ghostbuster movie early in one of those 4DX movies, uh, theaters. I was really excited to see that movie just because like I like Ghostbusters and, and yeah. I heard that the new cast was going to, I mean, the old cast was going to have more screen time and all that. So I was excited to see that. But I got to be honest, like that experience took me out of the movie oh. because half of the time I was worried about like my drink falling off of the <laughs> chair. My, I'm not joking. Like it's that yeah. aggressive. It's like, where yeah. I like had to grab my like popcorn and like my drink and like mm-hmm. we're like bouncing around. Um, I probably won't do it again if I had to, but um, especially with not that not that aggressive of a movie because you know I mean obviously Ghostbusters is an action film. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. It was just too much. Mm-hmm. Now maybe if it was like like a gone in 60 seconds movie or something, right? That I think that would be more appropriate because it'd be like, oh, like you're actually like in there with the cars. Um, But for Ghostbusters, there was a lot of times where I just wanted to pay attention to the movie and like really get the, you know, Mm -hmm. but I couldn't because I was so worried about my popcorn flying off my seat, you know? Um, But other than that, it was a fun experience. Like, you know, they invited a bunch of, you know the the social media like influencer people so like right. they did, so they did like they showed like a preview at first so we can get some like footage to like put online right um before the movie even started and then you know they did like an announcement i thought they were going to bring out some somebody from the movie or like some you know just someone to promote it but uh it was just one of the you know one of some head honcho guy from somewhere i don't i don't know i didn't really know did but you, did you like the movie i did like the movie though so that's what it's gonna get to um a lot of no- nostalgic things in it um and i don't want to spoil like obviously i'm not gonna spoil the you know the plot or anything like that but it's kind of cool one of the first things that you see are the old 1980s ghostbusters commercials mm. and it, it kind of opens up with that like the toys and like the, just the old real commercials That's and awesome. um and it's yeah it's like playing on a little tv and that part right immediately goes for the the mm-hmm. nostalgic gut punch right and you're like oh yeah like i remember mm-hmm. that and like um and then of course when you see the the original actors they don't wait till the end like they actually introduce them all early on and they're in the movie like they're, they're there's cool. a lot of a lot of screen time especially um What's his name? Uh, Dan Aykroyd. He he's in most of the movie. Wow. So yeah, so that was cool. Uh, Bill Murray, you know, he comes out in it, and you know, they they all have they have roles in it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of cool. That's kind of it was really cool to see that. And then I really like Paul Rudd. Like Paul Rudd, just he's funny to me. Like he, you know, mm-hmm. he's just like such a likable, funny guy. Is that so, the like, ant guy? The ant guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Ant, yeah. Um. And yeah, I mean, it, it was like I said, it was a it was a good movie. It was a fun movie. Um, definitely, yeah, I definitely would say go watch it. Um, cool. Which, you know, and but again, maybe not necessarily in the four DX. Yeah, I don't know about the four D. I mean, maybe if you want to, you know, you know, spill. And it. I bet that, I think that's expensive. Money. I'm sorry, to cut you off. I bet it's very expensive putting that system in those theaters. Oh, I bet, man, because it's it, every single, every two seats. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Every two seats had it. So it's oh, like yeah. every, it's like, whew. so they have to spread the seats apart. And it was really, they're high off the floor. So when you mm-hmm. sit on it, you're like, you know, like a foot, you're like your feet are about a foot off the ground. And uh, like I said, I mean, it, it was fun. It was a cool experience, but I was so worried about like all of just, the concessions just spilling. Yeah. Like, I don't even know how they didn't spill. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's so sad what's happened. You know, it's like, you know, I, I don't even go that much anymore. You know what I mean? And I, I just, when, when I go, it's always a good experience. Oops, sorry. No. Yeah. It's always a good experience, right? Going to the movie theater, but the day that comes that they close theaters down is going to be a really sad day. And I, I don't see in 10 years them being around. And I, and I hope that I'm wrong about that. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I hope not. I mean, I my kids love the theater. Like yeah. that's uh, my kids love the movie. It's, I think it's up to us to make keep it going. You know what I mean? Like yeah. take them, you know? Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I, I hope so. I don't. I don't think. I. I don't think they'll they'll go out, but yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Or at least I don't know. Maybe like do them like the old old school ones where it was like a matinee where you pay like a certain amount of money and you could watch like two three movies, you know, or something. Yeah, they're they're excuse me, they're doing that now. They're they're doing that. They're, they're just like bringing these old movies back, which I think is awesome. You know. No. But you know, I know my kids, even my son and stuff, would think it's a cheesy. Rad was the cheesiest movie ever. You know? Yeah. What's up, Flex? How you doing, man? Good to see you, Flex. But yeah, that's that's. But but Rad was awesome. The soundtrack was badass. No. But back to Roadhouse, just real real quick. Yeah. I'm yeah. just gonna say straight up, the new movie, some pretty cool fight scenes and stuff, but sucks. Rhoda? Oh, yeah. Is uh, it? It's absolutely. I but, like uh, Jalen Hall. You know, I think he's a great actor. I like him as an actor. Yeah. But, oh, is that the one where he's like a fighter? Like, he's yes. like. Oh. Yeah, he, he's named. He has the same name, Dalton. And, you okay. know, it's kind, of the, kind of this. But the story is, is it's like miss. It's, like, mm. it's almost like they skip pages in the script. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, we go from this scene to this scene. Ah, we don't need to do that. We're in a hurry. Yeah. And so you go from knowing what the original story was like, and sure, they're going to change it up a little bit, but still keep it the same. But yeah. some of the main key things, like why he killed his, um, spoiler alert, why he killed his friend in the ring, they never once talk about that. I, I mean, it's just stupid, dumb. So. Yeah. I mean, it's worth everybody watching one time, but you're going to see, yeah. especially – the, the, the old school people like me that seen the original one sucks. Yeah. Jose disagrees with you. He says it's the best roadhouse between the two. Oh my gosh. He's, but he's probably 25 years old. Just as good as Crystal Skull. I, I think, oh. I think he's being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get controversial. He's trying to get, get you riled up. I gotcha. Was that Crystal Skull your comment, Gabe, or his? No, it's his. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, oh, that's hilarious. I got Joel in the house. What's up, Joel? How you doing, man? Hey, good to see you, Joel. Um, and if he's being serious, Jose, uh, you you have very bad taste in movies, but that's okay. <laughs> hey, and Jose, trust me. I mean, I I'm a Back to the Future two guy, and Michael thinks that's. He hates that one. So, I mean, I hear you, man. I, I And I'm going to be sure to get a vote from the Back to the Future cast when I get to see him on May 25th. And, Gabe, we're going to document that one, son. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, let's, let's talk about that just really quick. Absolutely. So, tickets are selling out fast. Um, if you guys are in the San Antonio area, I don't know if you guys already saw, but Michael is hosting a Dinner with the Stars um with the back to the future cast um i i think i mean let me let me just play can i play the the little promo that i that we created absolutely and thank you for bringing it up too by the way yeah here let me let me show you guys a little let me let let them explain what it is hey there friends it's Harry Waters Jr. Oh, Marvin, your cousin Marvin Berry? <laughs> well, you can join me and some of your other Back to the Future stars for a Dining with the Stars at, you guessed it, Dark Side Brick Oven Pizza Company in Bernie, Texas, May 25th. Be there, be square, be wonderful, because if you show up, who knows who might end up being an earth angel, earth angel. Will you be mine? We'll see you there on May 25th at Bernie, Texas. May 25th, which is Saturday night, Dark Side Brick Oven Pizza Company. I'm Claudia Wells, Jennifer Parker and Back to the Future. Dining with the stars, Back to the Future stars, that is. Too excited. 
come there or be square and make like a tree and don't leave. How about a ride, mister? Saturday night, May 25th, 6 to 9 p.m. Hope to see you there. God bless you. Hello, everybody. My name is Mark McClure, and I played Jimmy Olsen in the Superman movies. And I also played Dave McFly in the Back to the Future movies. And a lot of Back to the Future cast members are going to join me in Bernie, Texas, the Dark Side Pizza Company. And I want you all to be there. I want you all to be square. And I want us all to have fun together. So I can't wait to see you all. It's coming up real soon. Can't wait. See ya. Hey, Don Full Love here. But you probably remember me as this guy, Goldie Wilson. So check it out. I want all of you to come check out dining or dinner with the stars at the Dark Side Brick Oven Pizza Company's grand opening. Amazing little themed restaurant that myself and uh, some other surprise guests from Back to the Future will be there. May 25th from 6 to 9 p.m. in good old Bernie, Texas. So remember, that's the Dark Side Brick Oven Pizza Company in Bernie, Texas, May 25th, 6 to 9 p.m. And I'll see you in the future. Uh, this is James Tolkien, alias Principal Strickland. I'm talking to you from upstate New York, but on May 25th, I'm on my way to San Antonio, Texas, for the opening of the Dark Side Brick Oven Pizza Company. It's going to be a great event. Actors from Back to the Future will be there. I'm hoping very much to see you there. Oh, wait a minute. Let me rephrase that. Be there. Oh, you're a slacker. <laughs> I love that. Man, it's, a, it's, it's Gabe, thanks for playing that, the real, and thank you for putting that together. You did a great job, man, and I appreciate all the support, especially with everybody already involved in this. It's a pinch me moment for sure. It's, it's hard to believe that, you know, we're actually doing this. You know, it's one thing creating this awesome uh, restaurant with all these 80s nostalgia themed props, and obviously we're going to have some good food and and drinks and, and whatnot, but to be able to share this experience with the public, you know, this is this is a one one time deal. Having the all them together is uh, very special, and we're we're going to be documenting this experience, you know, at the dark side, you know, and it's really really cool, you know, that holy shit, they're coming to to my place, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's really, really cool. yeah. So, I mean, I know there's a, a, a few of our, our friends that live in that area. And I mean, obviously get the word out before they sell out. Um, yeah. Cause yeah, Michael just barely put them out on sale today. Yeah. And they're, yeah they're already starting to sell. So yeah. Kind of get in there. Um, it's what? 350 Michael. It's th it's 350. Yep. And What's really good about this is is that the people that um, are looking to attend, it's going to include, it's a red carpet event. It's a real special. Everybody that comes through there will feel like a celebrity. That's what we, that's what the, the, the goal is. And obviously uh, to wine and dine them and to be able to, to have that one-on-one -on -one experience with, with the actors and uh, get signed autographs and get their, their photos taken, you know, with the actors. And, we do have some surprise things that are going to be taking place there, which we can't discuss until that moment. We're going to be giving away souvenirs to everybody that, that shows up um, that we're, we're having made specifically for them for the event. So mm -hmm. something that they'll be able to hang on to, which is really, really cool. But yeah, it's really cool. I was actually talking to Mark McClure. Um, was it Jimmy Olsen and Superman and, you know, uh, Marty's brother. Uh, and yeah, it's just, it's crazy to, you know, we talked for a good 30, 45 minutes last night on the phone and I forgot that he was in Apollo 13, but you know, I got to take these guys. I got to take these guys golfing on Sunday after the thing. You know I mean? So, but yeah, it's, it's uh, just, just hearing. And, and I, just so you guys know, I, I do plan on talking to each and every one of them, getting the, you know, it's a small little bio on these, uh, on, um, what's going on in their world now, you know, what they're doing after um, the movies and, and how back to the future impacted them, you know, yeah. specifically, but uh, Tolkien, he's a character, man. It's crazy. That guy's 92. When you see that, he didn't look like he's 92 years old, you know? Yeah. 
just absolutely incredible. So it's crazy. So yeah, if, uh, if you guys are close, you know, hopefully um, you guys can make it down. Um, I do know that um, the hotels were already booking up also for that weekend. I know for the May the 4th event, it's pretty, you're going to, there's plenty of hotels, but just not in the Bernie area that it's going to be hard to find. But, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun event. And hopefully it's very successful because that will um, yeah. just know that we're going to be moving on to other, other events similar. So. Yeah. That, I mean, and that's, I think that's the coolest part about that too, is that, I mean, you're kicking this, this, you know, type of event off with the big, that's a big one. Right. And especially yeah. because of that, like, you know, we always talk about that, you know, some of the older actors, you know, they're from the eighties, they, you know, they might not, they're they're getting right they're getting older right and they might not be doing autographs they might not be doing signings right yeah. um you know yeah. so it might be you know some of the last chances you'll be able to to interact with them and interact with them in a different way which i think that's the coolest part about what you're what you're trying to do michael is that you know you can go meet celebrities at 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 the conventions when you go up to your booth and you're separated by the table and sometimes they'll come around, you'll take a picture, you get to tell them whatever, but this, it's more of a personal, like one-on-one -on -one event where you're actually like mingling with them. Like, I think that's a great, great. Thank you. Yeah. And that, that's a, a very good point. It, this is definitely not like a con of, con of, you know, nothing against those, but this is definitely more of a, a personal thing. And to be completely honest, um, uh, one of the actors um, is coming out of his retirement. He doesn't do cons or any of that stuff anymore, but he felt this was a different type of uh, ambiance and a special occasion. And uh, so I got him coming, you know, so uh, he, he's not going to be doing these. I mean, yeah. we're having to get his, the photos for him and do all that stuff to, to cater to, to get him here. And after talking to him last night, he's, he's pumped now, you know, he's excited for the experience and, I guarantee everybody that attends this Dinner with the Stars event is going to have a fantastic time. So, yeah. And I guarantee also that they will be coming back to the next one. Yeah. So, yeah. And I can't wait because I'm assuming you're going to have them all. I mean, I don't know, but you had Claudia sign your your DeLorean. Yes. That's going to be Yeah, cool. that's, that's funny because me and Jens were in there walking around because we're, we're – you know, uh, how we're doing our, the red carpet event, you know, how people get the photos and stuff. We're going to have photos taken with the, you know, every, the guests that are coming in. Um, but definitely every celebrity that comes in, we got to document the autographs at the dark side. You know what I mean? So people in the future that show up can see that these people have visited, you know, yeah. the dark side. And, and I think a, a lot of you guys that know me, I'm I'm so I'm not going to lie. I'm so overwhelmed because I'm just trying to get the place open for our May May the Fourth event for everybody that's flying in and that are coming from literally all over the place. And and I'm really excited about that. I'm excited about everything that's coming. Our our my new GM has been working this week, and uh, but you know it's one thing just to get a restaurant open, and I'm promoting for future event at the dark side. So there's just a lot that's, you know, at stake and what I'm trying to do, you know, and then um, hope that our world doesn't explode, explode in the eclipse. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> oh man. I don't know how, I don't know how NASA is going to do it to cover. Yeah. This. <laughs> yeah it, it, it's going to, um, it's going to be a very cloudy day. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. What the yeah. hell? I was talking to my buddy, and, and he's like, "Yeah, it's gonna be cloudy that day." And it was just hilarious. So um, oh, that would suck if it's cloudy. All especially it's it's coming, man. That would. You wouldn't believe what people are doing to make a buck. I mean, all the people are putting in these huge beer orders and everything, and they were even asking me because you know I've been stocking the base. And they're asking about, you know, do you want to go ahead and stop now for this? And I'm like, no, you know, but. <laughs> and you're like, and then all of a sudden you're not going to have. Pizza. Oh, I've stopped because we're not going to open till after anyway. Oh, yeah, that's true, that's yeah true. so we'll be, we're already stopped. You know, our, our yeah. coolers are already stocked with beer and wine. And, yeah. 
So, dang, that's uh, crazy. But it's and it's May sixth, right? Um, what's that? Or no, when when is the the eclipse? Is it April sixth? I, I have no idea. No clue. April. It's 6th. not a big deal to me at all. I, I everyone, I just don't understand why people are making such a big deal out of it. But hey, it's okay. I, I get it. You know, but I, I mean, I, I always it looks super eerie every time there's an eclipse that I've seen. It's like it just looks like, you know, like when I don't know if anyone's been like when there's like a fire nearby or like a big yeah. like big fire where it kind of hazes. It makes everything kind of purplish, like weird, yeah. like this weird haze over. Yeah, like, I know exactly what, what you're saying. Oh, there you go. Edgar's, yeah, it's April 8th. OK, uh, it's coming up, man. It, so is it? Because they're saying literally, like where where I am is like yeah. going to be the best place to be, which is weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I actually was just showing my web today this because we were talking about that. I was like, oh yeah, there's an eclipse coming up soon. But it's like the and it's it's the biggest deal in the United States <laughs> because it's going to cross a major portion of the United States. A lot of times it kind of just skips it and it like goes a different pattern. This yeah. time it's going to come up through Mexico and it's going to go through Texas. So you're going to get like the epicenter is Texas. Yeah. You're going to get like the best view and then it's going to go up kind of towards New York. <laughs> so yeah, we're not it's supposed to be like, um, like, like around one o'clock in the afternoon, it's supposed to be like dark. Yeah. It turned, that's what I'm saying, but it's not really dark. It's like, cause I've, I've seen, so the the last big solar eclipse, like major, where I was at an epicenter was in, I want to say, 1990, 91, where it, my, my parents sent me to Mexico um, for the summer with my grandparents. And then they had that so, solar eclipse that was like literally right through Mexico. Mm. And it, like, it's the eeriest, like, color. It like, everything turns like... Mm -hmm. I don't know, like a bluish, grayish color. It's weird. Yeah, we had one just, um, I don't know, maybe four months ago here. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. a big deal. Not a big deal. But I get it. We, had, we haven't had it since like 1880 or something, you know? If you fall within the line of totality, you get two, three minutes of darkness. But but it's weird because, like I said, the the ring is still, like, you still see, like, a, a, a slight ring. Sorry, I got hiccups now. I get, we get this, like, halo. Mm -hmm. You get a little bit of light there, but it's like the weirdest, like eerie sense. So when you look at it, no, don't look is it going to look like that movie, that new Star Wars movie coming out, Accolades or what? Don't, don't look at it. You know, I am. That's what I feel about the movie. Don't watch it. Anyway, so, okay. Uh, oh, man, I got hiccups for some reason. The weird, okay. You know what? I was it's so, it's, it's going to be crazy, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. But by the way, Edgar asked. He was like, "Gabe, you should switch your view so you could have the AT at t behind you too." So, oh, I was wondering. Yeah, very cool. Oh man, um, he's right. You guys see? You see that? Did you guys see my my video? Clatu. Yeah, Clatu. Did you, you see? I, yeah. Huh? I, I. You have? Can you show it up to the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Let's and see. Then I, I put the the Kenner figures next to it because I just yeah that's it. badass. Oh man, I hate hiccups. I mean, yeah, that's cool. Very cool. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what's going on. I gotta go drink some water. Mm -hmm. so. That looks really good. And it's big. So anyone who has the that is a good size, right? The weak wing. Oh yeah. Yeah, weak wing is pretty big. God, they look a lot alike, don't they? Well, it's the same. Yeah, same sculptor, same artist. Um, yeah, pretty much the same size. Nice. Did you know I just ordered mine on um, yesterday, Friday? Yeah. They only had like twelve left. Is it? It's probably sold out now. No, there's they're still there. Um yeah, there's they're still there. I mean, yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised the weak way still you can still get the weak way. Really? 
Yeah, I think hey, I'm going to show you something real quick because we were talking about it, me and you, the other night when you were yeah. going to pick up that figure. I want to show you something I have just laying in my freaking garage. Hey. Yeah, people are gonna. I shouldn't have this in there. But... God damn it! <laughs> it Check this out. Part. I do. I'm. I'm like watching you in the background, not realizing that I'm still on the big screen. Look, isn't that cool? So this is what it looked like, Gabe, and they included the three figures. Yes, isn't that cool? Yeah, dude, that's so cool. Yeah, they and then they came out with another one, and this was tan, and they had uh, the other droid in there that's really really difficult to get. So, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Now is that it, it kind of? I know dude, this, these hiccups. My family always makes fun of me because I'm controlling them right now, but I actually get really loud hiccups. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do too. Though. I do too. Yeah, but because we're live, I'm like trying to like mute them down. But like usually they're like super loud. Yeah, man, <laughs> I can't get rid of them. I'm gonna have to go drink some water or something. But yeah, you're good. Here, uh, go. I have one of mine. <laughs> hold on, let me hold my breath. Does anybody know any good tricks to get rid of hiccups? Oh man, yeah, hold your breath. You know what happens? Like if I drink a soda, a Dr. Pepper or a Big Red or something, hiccup right immediately. All right. Let's see. Fuck. Ah, didn't work. Hey, did you? It's really sad. There's a guy that I was just talking about this yesterday that goes into to the gym. He's a younger kid. And at first I thought something was like wrong with him, you know, but he has the hiccups. Every time he's in there, he, it's like his, he has the hiccups always. <laughs> you trust me <laughs> see those are the loud ones oh man yeah get someone to scare you yeah right but yeah um eat a what a spoonful of peanut butter works <laughs> every time Stand here. everyone's getting in on it Stand on your hands upside down that's hilarious i mean hey at this point i gotta You'll do it. You'll try anything, right? Um, but yeah, I'll probably go grab some, mm -hmm. some water. <laughs> All right, Michael, you got it. Hold on. I'll be back. I got this. I got it. And don't worry. I'm not going to. Nothing to controversy. I'll see you in a bit. Definitely the world is flat. Okay. The Apollo never happened. I'm just kidding. Hey, guys. So when when Gabe gets back, we need to talk about the, the upcoming release of the, the new uh, Star Wars movie, The Accolades movie i think that's how you say it right accolades um i don't know how many people in the chat are loving it okay um anyway so he's got an ad at my ad at is way bigger than his <laughs> uh okay i think i don't know if he's being serious or not but we're going to still talk about it anyway so um everybody in the chat let's get a, a yay or nay are you excited for this uh, upcoming um Series to come out, yes or no? I'd like to get your thoughts. Really curious. I think all these upcoming films, I think we all, because we're such big Star Wars fans, I think we're yearning for just new content, just something new in the Star Wars universe. The problem I have is when it's changing the scope of what Star Wars is and has always been about. I um, I don't think that, and we've talked about this in the past, that we need to, to make a statement in the Star Wars universe. I think it just, it needs to be about the story and something that's entertaining, you know? It doesn't have to be action-packed or, or, you know. Uh, anyways, let's see what some of you guys are saying. Uh, Yeah, nah, nah, okay, terrible, okay, yep, yeah,
man, got a lot of you guys. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't heard anything positive about it. Hmm. That's pretty bad when you haven't even seen it, right? What does Edgar say? Star Wars, anything. But I will always live and prefer the original Star Wars. All right. Water's not working. It's I'm not. On the, on, the, on the peanut butter stage. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to see if Carl. Yeah, it's Steven and Carl. be good, but not really super excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I just asked everybody if um, they, they were excited about it to come out and um, what they thought. Star Trek. Wow. Looks like a horrible fan film. Wow. There hasn't been one comment, and there's been several of them. So let's go ahead and, um, hey, there's Jeff. We don't want to get his opinion either, trust me. Um, Joel, X-Men story, yeah. So, Gabe, are you excited for the new one to come out? Are you, you, what are you thinking? Well, if the hiccups will go away. but So, look. I'm excited that it's not the Skywalker story. That's the only thing I'm excited about because <laughs> I think that's what needs to happen. They need to start doing these like offset, like, you know, little side stories with characters that we don't know, just totally different, like something new, just like completely different. And the reason why I say that is because they can't keep on expanding and expanding on the same characters like they just can't there's gonna get a backlash by, by the fans and it just it's not gonna work am i excited about it i love like the sith and like the bad guys i'm excited to see that part of it i'm excited to see you know how that plays out i i don't know how i mean i mean we just saw a trailer right i mean i don't really know I don't really know. I prejudged the Bad Batch. I was like, eh, I'm not going to watch it. And this last season was really great. So I'd rather just go in with zero expectations. Zero. Like, just go in blind. I learned my lesson with Book of Boba Fett. I learned my lesson with the Obi-Wan series. Like, just go in with zero expectations. And then see how it comes out, you know? Yeah. So real quick before we get into so Webb, uh, thanks. Early in the show, I mentioned Rad, and yes, um, I, I wasn't quite sure. I could remember who brought it up on the show last week. And thank you. I loved it. It was fantastic. Okay. So yeah, I think what's happening, I think. Um, I agree with that. Old films. I'm very excited for it. That's okay. I mean, we can't all, all think of it. So um, I, I think what's happening and there's nothing that first off star wars for disney is a money grab period it, it's all about you know getting in and out what i, I think is happening is they're just bringing in all kinds of different type of people that just come that is don't have, that aren't talented people i'm not just saying in my humble opinion i don't when i say talented i'm not talking about actors and I'm, I'm talking about directors you know it's like how they how do they find these directors? You know what I mean. But um, but what I was going to say though is, I think that what's happening when when all of these different things, I mean it, it, it's it's like you know we're always excited to see something new because it's Star Wars, right? Oh, we're going to see somebody with a lightsaber doing stuff. But I think that it's you know I guess you, you just have to be weird like me and just just remember that Star Wars Empire and Return of the Jedi is something in itself. And it's always going to be that. And there's going to always be new generations that are going to come that maybe it was a four-year-old right now that accolades is going to be the best Star Wars movie that ever happened. But it sucks because I think that it's when you have all these different directors coming in on something that was created by a certain person that made it what it is, that made it why we are here on Saturday night. We're not here on Saturday night because all these new freaking directors are, are that are making these movies or Kathleen Kennedy even we're here because of George Lucas and his team that created the modelers right the the John Williams the music and everything that created that awesome universe and and if 
you're not careful and you're just bringing in all these different story writers and script writers and you're combining cartoons with no. with the the real it's you're starting to to lose because all they're trying to do is piece this puzzle with this puzzle, this puzzle with this puzzle, and this puzzle with this one. And by the time, even though, sure, they're away from the Skywalker saga, which I agree with you, by the way, Gabe, on that. But the thing is, though, is, like, I, I think I, I would go into seeing something like this, like it's a Dune movie or something, not that's, Star Wars. And that's what I'm saying. That That's that's exactly my point, that mm-hmm. we, we got to approach these as not Star Wars, because we have a different kind of concept of what star wars is even the prequel fans right like tell me tell me you were a fan of jar jar binks and and episode one through three no yeah. no we're we tolerate them now and we're we're more accepting of them now because yes. now it's like yeah. you're you're contrasting them now to like you know the, the sequels and stuff like that but like you this these same comments right now that we're getting I guarantee you in 2004, right, we would have been getting the exact same thing. Like Star Wars is dead. George Lucas ruined it. They yeah. just ruined the movies because of the prequels, right? A hundred percent. There's not a single person in this chat that I you could truly tell me that you're a big fan of the prequels when they first came out. I mean, maybe Revenge of the Sith, maybe. I think, I think John, Johnny was, but but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this real quick, though. That he the and, and this is where it can get bad. I mean, Gabe are good, and, and we're not going to get off. But why do you guys have to? When I say guys, I'm talking about Lucasfilm or Disney. Why I don't understand why they have to bring in. They have to prove certain points, you know, like sexual type of things. And it's not what Star Wars is. And sure, look, when George Lucas made Star Wars, and it was. There was one girl, it was Princess Leia, and she was the hero. I mean, she is, you know, kicked ass and took names. And now it's like, you know, it's like they have to make a point of having it all women, and then, you know, it's it, and they're and they're taking it even to the next level. I mean, look at Willow. I, I loved the first movie, Willow. I, Willow was a great movie, and you know, seeing seeing you know the knowing that they're coming back out with Willow, I thought was really really cool. But you know, then they start bringing in. Stuff that just I, I just don't understand, you know. I, I if they would just keep that shit out of it, it, it would be and but, just create a good story, you know. But that's what I'm saying. That this is that's what I'm saying. That, that our opinion's never going to change. Look, yeah. Arkea says he was born in 2000. They grew up with the prequels and the Clone yeah. Wars. Yeah. So they that's what I'm saying. Like that same hatred that's that's out there. It was the same thing, and in fact, it was it was a little bit different then because it was like, what's with all these special effects? Everything is digitized, like everything is blue screen. You know, the dialogue is garbage, right? I mean, you guys all remember, and and it's an unpopular, an un, un yeah, unpopular opinion these days to like talk negatively about the prequels, right? Because most of the fans now are are of that age where they're, you know, they grew up with the prequels and it's a, it's a very hot take to say that the prequels are bad, right? These days. But back then in 2003, 2004, I mean, there's a, there's documentaries made about how the fans hated George Lucas, just hated him. Like they were, he, he ruined everything for them. He ruined, you know, made Darth Vader, you know, this little, this, little wimpy guy they and then when he did the re-edits remember when he went and and messed with the with the with the special editions remember that the fans were fucking pissed they yeah. took out like the ewok celebration song they it added that that extra scene in the java palace right you remember that i yeah. mean we were all fans back then and there was so much backlash with the special editions mm-hmm. People hated the special edition. Well, the the original fans. So what all I'm saying is that there's always going to be the like original base, right? They can't make, and I'm gonna say us because I'm I'm part of that. Like I was, I was a I was a hater all the way. I hated the the special editions. I hated the prequels. You know, um, I I was like I wanted them all original because that's what we grew up with. Yeah. 
But at one point, like I had to, like I had to turn it off because, and honestly, what did it for me, and which is kind of crazy because it happened so recently, was Clone Wars, was that cartoon, The Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. That actually turned it off for me because then I was like, oh shit, like the prequels were actually pretty good once you watch Clone Wars and you start tying Mm -hmm. everything together and learning about the characters, right? And I started seeing them in a different light. Everyone's super excited all over the internet. Go see episode one, right? It's coming out May 3rd. Everyone's super excited. I got my tickets, got my tickets. I went to watch it just when they came out in 3D. And I couldn't, I literally like was embarrassed for like, because I, you know, I brought my wife. I was like, let's go watch episode one. I was embarrassed because she's not a Star Wars fan like, like I am. And she's like, did that guy just say, like, did Jar Jar Binks just say, like, ex- was it excuse me? Like when he's yeah, like, yeah. excuse me. So um, do you think, do you think, Gabe, when, when these, when, the, when, when there's a, and I'm not talking about that Ryan Johnson dipshit. I'm talking about when you've got like, like a serious writer that's writing and, and cares about their work and they're, they're doing their, and they have this script that they lay out in front of Kathleen Kennedy. I've never, there is more Kathleen Kennedy haters out there than I've ever seen. And I've, I've always respected her. I don't know if it's because I've met her before and thought I liked her, you know, and just what she did in Spielberg and, and Lucas, of course, saying, hey, I think you need to, to, to take the, the run. You need to be, this is all in your hands now, Kathleen, you know. But do you think when a script is being writ- written that somebody walks in that room and says, hey, this is the story, that's one thing, but we need to put this in there too. And I'm talking about an agenda that puts out stuff to make certain people out there happy, which I think is shitty. You know? Yeah, yeah, but that, but that's different though, because I yeah. think with the prequels, like the originals and the prequels, it was 100% George Lucas. Yeah. George Lucas owned that. And that's why fans hated George Lucas for the prequels, yeah. because he ruined it. But yeah. at the end of the day, he had the right to ruin it. It's his... Yeah. It's his story. He could ruin it all he wants. You know, who cares about the fans? That's why he stopped interacting with the fans. That's why he stopped doing anything with the fans because of such a bad backlash because of the prequels. And I think a lot of people have have kind of amnesia towards that because because it's because the prequels are popular again at Hayden Christensen. And I I actually love it now. Like I I flipped because of the of Clone Wars. Yeah. I'm all I'm saying is that all the new stuff that's coming out, as long as it's not touching my, like my childhood and my memory, like Book of Boba Fett, to me, that I was just like, God, that you're ruining my, what my Boba Fett's all about. Yeah, you ruined what I think Boba Fett. That's about. what a lot, a big majority of a lot of these, because it was cool. Because when they did Mando, Mando was a different character, and he was cool. Yeah. But what's happening though, Gabe, some of these certain agendas that are coming in on these newer things, and, and, and you're like, well, you haven't even seen the movie. How do you know about that agenda? Well, when you hear the director saying what she's saying, and she was downing a lot, and I mean, this was, she said this. Yeah. She was really downing George Lucas and, and was like, a pre- didn't really want him on the, you know, she thought that he was making people, being on the set was making people nervous because he wasn't going to like what they were doing or, or whatever, you know, and, but I, I, I don't know. But the bottom line is, is I think that anybody out there, I know the majority of the people agree with what's happened with all these new things. And I'm not talking about agenda. I'm just talking about from the story to whatever, yeah. but there's just a couple of them that are good. But I think that if you can like, like our buddy Pete, Pete hasn't seen any of the, he hasn't seen force awakens. And that takes a lot of, that's like somebody that's saying, look, we're not going to come out with another ET. ET was done. It was done right. We're not going to come out with another one. Back to the future. It was done right. Let's not come out with any more. But it, it's about, well, it's, it's successful. It needs, it can make more money. We're definitely going to, so write a script about it in the story, put it out there. And, you know, a few will like it. You know? Look, here, here's, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you my, my hot take, my parallel here. It's like Batman. Right? Batman. You got Batman. You got your original, you know, TV series Batman fans, right? Yeah. Cool. 1989 comes out, you know, 
cool Batman. It's kind of more towards like, you know, like darker. It's, you know, cool actors. And all of a sudden it starts getting commercialized. Like and it was, it was a commercial movie regardless. I a mean, thousand percent. Burn. But as they start getting popular, all of a sudden it's like, well, now you're going to add those nipples on the, on the bat suits. Now it's all like comedic. It's like, they're trying to, to, you know, to, basically make it overly commercialized and then it flops right and then they have to relaunch it again with like the new batman movies right with the mm-hmm. with christian bale all right then those do okay but then they have to relaunch it again to try to like appease different fans because yeah. you know there it's a different style of batman and then now it's joker and penguin and they're going darker because they see that that works and that's what the fans work why well, see that like star wars where it's like there's the original fans, nothing's gonna appease the original fans. So that forget it. Like there's there's nothing that they can do to to make us all happy. But they're relaunching it every single time to kind of adjust to the fandom. The problem is, I think right now we're in our nipple bat suit era, right? Like mm-hmm. right now we're in that era where they're like. <laughs> overly trying to appease mm-hmm. kind of the, the the masses right like the crowds um so you know don't don't, don't use that as a quote <laughs> it's yeah, like right the nipple batman the new so, star are so, like, for, so for everybody in the chat that's listening right now i i want to uh yes or no on this and i want your thoughts Gabe. so do you guys and gals think that if we were if george lucas knew what he knows now back then it was going to happen. Do you think number one, he would have let Kathleen Kennedy take over on it? Um, Do you think that she would still exist in that world or would she still be helping out? She'd probably be her own director. I don't know. But um, do you guys think that Lucas would have sold? Do you think that he would have still where, where Lucas is right now? Do you people think, that he regrets selling to Disney. What do you think, Gabe? In a yes or no? No. Okay. All right. And and that could be because I could explain. I could explain why. Yeah, go ahead. I think the only regret is probably what they did to his character, like Luke, right? Like I think yeah. that's that's probably the only thing. But that even fucking if, huge though, what they did that they fucking yeah, took him out like, from a tree. But you know how I I, I could tell. Because they just quoted him right now. He went on, you know, on on an interview, literally telling all of the the stockholders for Disney to make sure to put that board back on with Bob Iger on the head of it. So he trusts Bob Iger as in charge of Disney just in general. Now, as far as Lucasfilm, I mean, again, Lucasfilm is now part of Disney. I mean, did would he trust Kathleen Kennedy? I think absolutely. Kathleen Kennedy was involved in all the Indiana Jones and all these greatest movies. She was yeah. one of the best yeah. producers yeah. of the eighties. There's yeah. no reason to not, you know, trust her. And and again, look, I, I I think this is where it gets it gets political and it gets you know, and this is that's why I said we shouldn't talk about it because it, it gets that way. No, it's okay though because it's it's not. I mean, the good thing is is. We're, we all, everybody that joins us on the show, it's not, I mean, I think Trump should be able to have a role in Star Wars. In Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> the hut or what? <laughs> One of the huts? Would, okay, everybody, would Trump be at the Sith or would be, he be a Jedi? He, no, he wouldn't be either one. He'd be uh, like a hut or something, like a, <laughs> like a, <laughs> Like a lord, yeah. like an underground. So, hey, but but yeah, you know what? I think that in his mind, building the, this this huge museum that I think is incredibly awesome. Uh, you know, that way people don't have to jump the fence and get arrested. They can actually go and see all this stuff. I think that's a really really uh, cool. I think that was a big thing for him. The thing is with Kathleen Kennedy. Yes, she has been was a part of all these fantastic movies, and 
I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't dislike Kathleen Kennedy. I know that's probably a shocker to a lot of you guys. I, I don't dislike her because there's you're not around to see everything that goes on. But I do know that all the movies that she was involved with and a part of, she was under these fantastic directors. You know what I mean? So she's not under Steven Sp Spielberg anymore and George Lucas and, and a lot of these other things that she was involved in. She was a producer, though. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like she was she was producing most of these yeah. things, which yeah. is technically what she's doing now, right? Yeah. I mean, not. I mean, she's not really involved. She's just hired. Yeah. You know, she just gives a thumbs up or thumbs down. I'm sure, because that's the thing. Like, how involved can she really, really be? Right? Yeah. Like down on the on the ground, probably not. I mean, anyone, you know, just any major business. Lucasfilm is like a you know. A, huge corporation and in order to be like the the president and ceo you think she's gonna be in you know like telling the cameraman to be like hey no like move the camera this way or like yeah, hey yeah. casting director no 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 cast this other. no she's like such high above but again it, it it's disney right and disney and i i know you keep on saying it's like an agenda i don't think it's an agenda i think it's 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 inclusivity. And I know that's the, again, I know I'm going to get some, some heat in the, in the comments, no. but I, that's what Disney's trying to do. Try, they're trying to expand this money cow, right? This cash cow into every single type of just everybody, every demographic. And the way I they to do it is to include every sexual orientation, every race, every, which I think they should now should it be like a parent like should it be like overly like hey you know like that i mean it, i you know i i don't know what it what when when william shatner you know kissed you know the what's her name um uh the african-american um female what's her what was her name the one that's that's on the ship um, um you know what i'm talking about right Oh, Ahura. Yeah. Yeah. What, like, right? I'm sure it's the same people that would have been complaining about Star Trek back then. Be like, yeah. why? Why? What a kind of agenda does Star Trek have to make interracial couples like a thing on the film, right? Yeah. Well, because, I mean, it's it's part of progress, part of just bringing people into yeah, it's not universe. Star Wars, Gabe. You know what I mean? It's but not, I, mean, I, know, I know that could be, but it, it's just not, I mean, you, you, you know what? Nothing's gonna. This is a topic that we could talk about for weeks because it's just. I'm just gonna tell everybody where I'm. St I stand. I'm. I'm sticking. I am not gonna watch it, and and uh, it's like my thing, no big deal. But I'm gonna, and I'm gonna tell you why. It's not because you know of uh, the different type of you know racial type of things that that goes on, and what it is is. It's killing. I think humbly, it's it's killing Star Wars. But after the, my generation of people that were there in the theater to see a ship fly in space for the first time ever, you never knew that they would be getting into bullshit. How this was just this was about a hero that saves the, the worlds and the planets. It wasn't about you know sexual shit or whatever, just to make prove a point. It, it was about the story. You know what I mean? It's like in Willow. I mean, having those two people. I mean, I, I could say some funny shit right now. I don't want to get, get too crazy, but I just think that it's agendas. You agenda is one thing; a story is another. And I think that it's very sensitive when it's a story like Star Wars. And I think that that uh, they don't give a shit. You know what I mean? And I think that, but but I think there's nothing wrong with your thoughts, Gabe. I just. You know, it's it's just something I just I just I just don't see how we can get all that from a trailer. Yeah, that's that's well, what. Let me, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Okay, it me. isn't what we got from the trailer. It's what we got from the director talking and what she said and what she what she wants the the Star Wars universe to turn. But what, but what in the in the trailer points that points to like her that she said that like you know what i mean whatever she said was her yeah. agenda what in the trailer kind of got people so worked up about that it's 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 a, it's the the women 
have to need to play, play the role in, in it. Yeah. And the thing is, it's like letting Star Wars, because I've never in my whole life, in my whole entire life, you know, I, I'm watching Leave it to Beaver today. I watched five episodes of Leave it to Beaver. And you see, you can't, you, but you can't come. I know, I know the times have changed. Leave it to Beaver was honestly like historically, pop culturally, probably one of the more racially like discriminatory shows out there. What's it that? Great. Leave it to Beaver. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. No, I'm not joking. Like just popular culture. Like when you when you, like look into history and you're looking at, you know, kind of like, again, the demographics at that time, you know, they wanted to idealize this nuclear white nuclear family. And that's what a lot of the shows were doing. And that's yeah. what they're they're trying to say, that this is the ideal family in the United States. Not if you're black, not if you're Hispanic, not if you're, you know, any other r- religious beliefs or anything. No, no, no. If you're a white Christian nuclear family. That's the ideal American history. And that that's that's what Leave It to Beaver is. And in yeah. fact, when you look, there's a lot of even just books and, and articles written about that time and that era, right? Where, you know, all of these shows were giving this sense of like these good old days. When the, these good old days, there weren't a lot of colored people back there. And these yeah. good old days, there you're, wasn't. You're right. like, like I watch Andy Griffith more than anything in the world. Right. And, and I think in one of all the episodes, I saw one African-American in the background. And I think that's, and, and, I, and like you said, it was the times back then. But, but I, I, was, I never looked at Star Wars like a, but it's, it all, it's about men and men. That's what I'm trying to say is that it wasn't the times back then. Yeah. It was just that they, 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 didn't, they didn't portray these, you know, any other cultures, um, mm-hmm. even though there was. I mean, even back then, the United States was probably already you know, more than 50%, right? Like just mixed, you know, but yeah. it just wasn't portrayed that way because there was an agenda. Yeah. There was an agenda. Leave it to Beaver had an agenda. Andy Griffith had an agenda. But, it was things- innocent. but listen, and I know you're going to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But listen, Leave it to Beaver was about family ethic, about right and wrong with the kids and how the kid. it wasn't about, you know, you know, Ward, you go to work and I'm going to cook. I mean, it, it was a lot about I do the dishes, you work, I take care of the kids. I love Leave It to Beaver. Look, yeah. Leave It to Beaver for me, it's like my, you know, Thank warm you. soup. And, you know, yes. like, it's yeah, like yeah. something that makes me feel nice and warm about it. I love Leave it to Beaver. I would sit at home whenever I'd be homesick. I would sit there and just watch reruns. Yeah. I love it. what I'm trying to just just trying to point mm-hmm. out is that. There's always agendas in yeah. entertainment. There's always. Back yeah. then, the agenda was a white nuclear family is the way to go. That's yeah. the agenda. Well, now the agenda, as, as, as you're pointing out, for some of these bigger studios is more, hey, we're diversified. We're, you know, there's, there's, there's more inclusion. But again, that's why I'm saying we shouldn't talk about this stuff because- No, it, we, it needs to be talked about. It's not bad. What we're doing is no. not bad. But it's well, just because, it's, because we're going to get into what this leads to is that it's going to start leading into politics and it's going to start. You're, you're right. You're right. You're right. I, but listen, I get it. But it just comes down to the bottom line is it's it's almost like, you know, the, the, the Star Wars, you know, it's just a different generation of fans, you know, but I will tell tell you, Gabe, and this is, you know, I know that Star Wars fans can be the, the worst out there, the meanest, and I get that. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't a hater about the Jar Jar Binks thing. I just didn't like that. There's, it was not a cool sand person in the desert with a little Jawa carrying droids and stuff. It was cheesy, you know what I mean? But the thing is, is this new stuff, it's just mixed in with stuff, and it's just, it's just our world has changed, you know. But I, I do... Um, I'm just going to stick to my, my, my original ones and, you know, just go from there. But it's cool that when they can have like cool dual fight scenes and stuff like that. But again, the problem with the agenda, and this is the we'll, we'll sum it up right here is agenda is one thing. A story is another. Are you hearing me, Gabe? Yes. Me? No, I'm laughing because Armando's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I saw that. But you hear me though? I don't care if it's Star Wars or not. It, it's it's a, is it 
about an agenda or is it about a story? And I think what you're basically saying, it's both. It's trying to appease everybody out there where, because I do, I want you to listen real quick. Hang on. I remember I was there. I was in the audience when the first time I saw Kathleen Kennedy stunt, somebody raised their hand and asked about why there's no Asians in Star Wars. And when, when they said that in, in the audience, she was like, well, um, we, we're, we're definitely working on all that. So I know what you're saying on a lot of things. And, and I never, and maybe it's because, you know, I didn't have to worry about race stuff, you know, with African-Americans. And, you know, I, I understand that I've never been racist against any ethnic skin. You know, if you're gay, I don't, I don't care. I just, you know, don't, I'm not, I've just got my thing, it's, but I don't have a problem with it and I'm not racist about it, but I just, there's certain things I don't want to see in my cool Star Wars TIE Fighters and X-Wings and AT-ATs and shit, you know what I mean? But it is what it is and, you know. Yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's, we're, we're dealing with, you know, with uh, incest in Star Wars since day one, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're like, we're, yeah, I mean, are we cool with brothers and sisters making out? Are we cool with you oh, know? But, hey, but she was pretty damn cute, you know. I might have, I've never had a sister, I, but you know. I'm just saying, there's a lot of a lot of people out there, you know, complaining yeah. about some random little thing about, you know, okay, there's two two girls kissing in the background in one of the movies. Yeah. Okay, there was a brother and a sister kissing in the original ones. Let's let's. Throw and there was a brother kissing in the original ones because Lucas didn't know that he was going to make them sisters to the second one. You know, whatever, right? whatever, right? The, yeah, there's no agenda there. It was just yeah. a mistake. Yeah. But still, that's what I'm saying. It, it's there's still controversial topics that are they're going to happen, but that shouldn't that shouldn't dictate the whole film. Like that shouldn't like that little yeah. part shouldn't ruin the film. Now, I agree with you. The storytelling shit. Like there's, it's bad storytelling, but I don't think just these little, little things sprinkled in there is what's ruining the the fandom or the film. That's yeah. not, or a director with whatever agenda they may have. That's not what's ruining it. It's the bad storytelling. It's the bad directing. It's the bad stuff. That's the stuff that's not good. Right. But, you know, I'm all about inclusivity. If, yeah. if they're going to, you know, it, for me, seeing Diego Luna. In Rogue One, in Andor, to me, that's huge. Yeah. How come people aren't complaining about that? How come people aren't complaining about his Mexican accent? Yeah. Why? Because it's good storytelling. That's right. If it was a shitty story, they'd be like, why are they putting these Mexicans on these <laughs> Star Wars? Why are these Mexicans? I just don't understand why they don't have any freaking puffy tacos in there. You know what I mean? I'm just, right, I'm, I'm just saying, like, he has a really <laughs> thick Mexican accent. I'm just like, Hey, the, the border is a crisis. Why are these Mexicans not taking over our Star Wars things? But because why? Because it's a good story. It's a damn good story. And Rogue yeah. One, regardless of what everyone says about Disney, Rogue One's a Disney movie. And Rogue One is badass. Yeah. Endor was great. It's That's a Disney-like show. What I'm saying is, like, don't... But they had good directors. They had good directors and good writers. Good. And I say this. I say this in, in the cleanest like sense of the word don't be prejudiced and what don't prejudge the the stuff until it comes out just because the director says something or because they're whatever but, that, it, but that's the thing that that's the whole thing is that when a director that puts this out and and we're having to go with her harvey weinstein views it's a problem you know what i mean i know that sounds terrible but the the thing is though it's like Keep your, your views to yourself, you know, and, uh, you know, if, if I think that's her thing. And, and there, I don't know if you've seen it, what was said, but it's, it's, there's some things that I didn't even know about it, you know, because I don't, I'm not on it like you even. Well, well Mark, I mean, let, let's talk about Mark Hamill. Mm -hmm. I know. Like, are you going to stop watching the original movies because Mark Hamill's out there talking, you know, putting his yeah. leaves? Yeah. No. And it's not going to change it, and it's not going to ruin how you see him in. But you're, but you're, but you're wrong, though, about that. It, it kind of makes it, it. It does. It it does. It hurts because when 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 you see that 
that little kid and, and then they start talking political stuff then it's like it's it, to separate to separate an actor look this is let's be real I mean, what are you gonna, so but what i'm saying is what you're gonna what are you gonna do about it that's oh. my question oh, no. yeah. Yeah, no. you can't like you're you can't do anything about it you know you're not gonna stop watching the original and, hey, and, and, and let, let me tell you because like mark hamill i love mark hamill i think mark hamill is a fantastic actor and he played a huge role in my childhood but what i what i don't like is him taking his celebrity in him and viewing saying making a because he's up there making a political statement, which I know I am. It's a free right. country. I get it, but but it hurts. It, it's it, I think it hurt. He ups, if if you if you look at the the reviews at like his comments on that post, he's got ninety percent of haters on there, and you know what I mean. And it sucks. I, look, I I agree. Let's let's take Charles. You know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Charles uh, Charlton Heston, right? Yeah, I remember about the Same guns, thing, right? Yeah. That, about the Second Amendment. Same thing. Yeah. Using his celebrity to like mm -hmm. advocate for the NRA and all that. Big backlash, right? Yeah. Same thing. A lot of people are like, "Hey, keep keep your your beliefs to yourselves," right? Clint yeah. Eastwood. Same thing, right? Clint yeah. Eastwood started doing the same thing. So yeah. they're they, they're doing it on both sides. It's not yeah, it sure. just happens to be like. You know, the Star Wars ones just happen to be. And that's what's funny, though, because it's the star. Like you said, like most of like even Clint Eastwood and, and all these other guys, great freaking actors. Clint Eastwood's one of the best and always will be. Uh, but when, when you hear Mark Hamill, it's Luke Skywalker. You know, that's the guy that was on that on Dagobah with Yoda and shit. You know what I mean? And But but, I'll, you know, just to square things out, it's just. I, I uh, apologize if there's anybody in the chat or it's going to be listening to this in the future. I just, I don't like, I don't, I'm not excited about where Star Wars has been going and is continuing to go. Um, but I'm not like one of those nerdy guys who is writing hate stuff about it. I, I, I still collect, I still purchase. I want to create an environment of nostalgia of the good old days when things were not just you know, in movies, but just the times all together, you know, when things just weren't so in your face as it is today, you know, and you can't, it's, it's crazy how things are. It's just, I mean, I, I just, am, I'm really nervous. But and, again, remember, well, remember when girls started wearing mini skirts in the nineties and the, you know, eighties, Yeah, people were saying that same thing. People wearing long hair. Why, you know, it's yeah. like in our good old days, boys had short hair. Why are you gonna? That's not like times change. You can't control that. All no, we can control, stay the same. Stays the same. All we can control is our our feelings, our nostalgic feelings, and how it, things make us feel. But like again, just like you're saying, like they can't, you know, force their beliefs on us or they're they're right. out. You know, neither can. Vice versa. Vice versa. But what sucks, but what, what I, what, this is what sucks, period. And I'm going to be done talking about this. What sucks is such an iconic movie, no doubt, right? Star Wars Empire Return were iconic movies because of the storytelling, because of these crazy models, because of the music, because of it's never been done and it's never been seen and it's great. And then because we need to make more money, we're going to start making all these other things to these just to keep it going. And, and then it's just like, but what has it done to Star Wars? You know what I mean? Like, I think if Star Wars would have been left alone to this day, it, could, it would still be what it is. You know what I mean? I, I think that today's society of people, your kids, like this, is, I mean, look at your, your beautiful little girls. They love Star Wars. They love Chewbacca. And you know why, though? Because of Ray. And that's the one thing. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, yeah. I wouldn't have been able to get my two daughters to like, you know, Star Wars if if it wasn't for Ray. I mean, it, it's it's 100% honest. Like, yeah. because of those movies, I was able to introduce my kids to Star Wars. Yeah. Regardless. And in the future, when they grow up, 
they're going to remember those sequels as like the ones that they grew up with. Right. I mean, probably not. They're probably going to remember because obviously yeah. we're engulfed in, in original trilogy. But what I'm saying is that it's, it just includes people, right? It includes people in fandom. And at the end of the day, it is a business. It is a business. And without these new films, without Disney taking over it, look, we there's a whole fandom. There's a whole, and I know, like the the collection community, it's just it's a small Star Wars community. It, it really, is. it's very small. Very small. There's a huge Star Wars community out there. There's a huge Star Wars like Disney park community, right? Yeah, myself included. We love going to Disneyland. We love going to to Galaxy's Edge. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the original trilogy, but it's without Disney, like there wouldn't be all these other fans and all these. And again, it's a business. Mm -hmm. It's bringing in revenue. They need to do that. Obviously, they bought it for a reason. You know, they got to make up the the four billion dollars back times twenty. Um, and I, again. Look, whoever they decide to hire as a director, you know, people, you know, love Woody Allen movies. Yeah. And that was a straight up, you know, yeah. pressure. Like, and people yeah. are still like, oh, Woody Allen, one of the great directors and this and that. Look, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, whatever the, the beliefs or whatever the of the directors or the actors doesn't really matter if there's the a story's got to be good. That's it, the story. So that's what I'm saying. If yeah, I 100% agree with with you guys as far as like storytelling could have been 20 times better um, on everything, and they haven't, and that's where they failed. But again, yeah, because Force Awakens when when Force Awakens came out, when it was Ray, I never once was like, why are they having a girl? I that wasn't my deal. My issue was, okay, where's Luke? I mean, I'm waiting this whole time and I see him at the very end of the movie, but it was the story was exactly a, a rerun of the, the first movies. It's like they, yeah. they had nothing into the story. It, it wasn't about a girl. Who cares? I mean, well, that's great. Yeah. You know, if she's oh, good. No, I, I agree with that. Like, I think, yeah, the sequels were lazy. They were, yeah. they're done way too fast really poor writing they there's conflicts in the story there's conflicts in the director and that's why they didn't bring back freaking what's his face um i don't know they were talking about shall, he who shall not be named what's the, yeah. the ryan johnson ryan johnson right no yeah ryan johnson yes ryan johnson yeah yeah that guy that he's guy the really most crazy. hated person in the it's crazy right because he's, everyone he's, I but he's not imagine he's directing Mark Hamill. I'd be, if, if I've been, I'm not, we're not, because he wrote it, right? I, I'll just, I'll just, yeah, anyways. No. But hey, I think that was, it was good, good topic. Me, I just, I, I choose to, you know, who knows? I mean, I'm not going to be like, I'm not watching it, but I, I really don't, I'm not, if it comes out, it's, you know, I'd, I'd be more excited to watch the, uh, the, the Bad Batch. I'll, uh I for me, I'm gonna have an open mind. Yeah. And just look, just like in in real life. Yeah. If I would have known and prejudged, or if you would have known my political beliefs or you're right, my beliefs, 100%. we we wouldn't have been friends. But right. what we do is we go beyond that and we go towards the substance and we look for something that unites us. That's right. That's what needs to happen. And instead of picking whatever the director said or whatever, look for something that's cool about it. That's like cool. That's yeah, here's it's it's a new Star Wars, right? Yeah. And enjoy it. Like, I mean, or not enjoy it, but I mean, just because someone says something doesn't it shouldn't change it. Look for the storytelling, look for the soundtracks, the you know, special effects. I mean you know, be a film critic, right? I'm well, I'm going to say this. The, the planets better be fucking flat, not round. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, it would be way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it's a it's, it's, it's crazy topic, right? But Gabe, no. I love you, bro, for damn sure. No. You know, never, never, ever, you know. No. Ever no, I know. And look, for everyone, 
we've we've had these we we've, we've had these. Oh yeah, we've had a lot of them. We've had a lot of them. And and, and, Michael, like Star Wars and, and and Michael did warn me though about it. That's why he's joking around. He's like, "Oh, we're we're going to talk about the the accolade." Uh, and I was just like, "Well, I mean, I I don't know, man. Like, yeah. that's it, it. It could get it could get scary. Yeah, but it, it won't ever with us. Ever. Right. So. But look, this is great because you get you get two different opinions here. Like, you get two different points of view. That's why we're what we are. Yeah. I'm I'm I mean, excited. I'm excited to see it. I'm going to look, watch it like totally just not expecting anything and see how it comes out. Yeah. Gabe, I, I, mentioned this, I, watch. I mentioned this last week uh, when, when you were probably at Disney. I can't remember. Uh, but I will, I will say that um, one thing about for, for two people that are alike but yet very different, we have created something very special that is – brought so many people together and friendships together. And, uh, you know, even though the majority of them side with me, <laughs> I think it's fantastic. It's an, you uh, know, it's an age, I think it's an age thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I think you're an old bastard. <laughs> no, no. I was going to take over with me, but, but. No, yeah, it's, so. it's, it's always good to have that. I mean, it, it is, it's the, you know. But hey, you know, like let, let's talk about just like films in general right now. I mean, I have not seen the new Dune. I just heard that it wasn't good, and the majority of people that I'm hearing are saying it's awesome. I loved it. Yeah, I okay, it. there you go. Uh, um, but the, the thing is, and I'm I'm gonna, I just I gotta like make myself watch it and see if it's you know what I mean. Watch and it. I don't care if it's something slow if it's if it's a good story. I don't need to have action. You know right. what I mean. Did you watch the first one or not? I tried to. Kind of like when I asked you if you watched something, you were like, I did, but I fell asleep. Kind of yeah. thing. Um, but the, there's just no movies coming out that are like, holy shit, did you see that movie? I mean, the last movie that came out, in my humble opinion, that was everyone was talking about was freaking Maverick. Oh, yeah, I see. And I didn't even see. I still haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't know if it would have the same impact if you didn't see it as a kid. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, Dune was definitely, yeah, like, see, I agree. Like, John, it, it's like it, when you look at it like a film critic, right? That, that's how you want to look at it. You see the acting, wow. the wow. film, like the, the shots, the audio and all that stuff. Dune is fucking great. I, yeah. love, I, I loved it. Part two. But I talked to, like, I think I think it was Lee I was talking to. Yeah, he hated like, it. Yeah, there yeah. he is. There he is right there. Yeah. He hated it. And yeah. and again, it, I it's, you know, I don't know. I think everyone just has to watch it and That's weird, Armando. I thought that movie was the most I couldn't get 15 minutes in that movie. Great actors, I'm sure, but that was just See, I I was I'm the same with that. With Oppenheimer, I couldn't get into it. Yeah, it's just like, eh. but and um, again, there's, I won a bunch of Oscars and all that stuff. Yeah, Lee says Deadpool. I I also think Deadpool is going to be great. I, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, I just hope the new, a new Hitman's Bodyguard comes out. <laughs> yeah, I heard the new Godzilla too. Yeah, I heard that oh, one really? too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I haven't watched it either. So. Hmm. Ghostbusters too. Yeah, we talked a little bit about that because I, yeah. I watched it. Um, earlier this week and it's good I, I liked it i mean even though again i was talking to lee and lee's like did you like it i'm like yeah he's like i don't know if i trust your opinion i'm like then why you ask yeah <laughs> yeah um but i i liked it i mean it's it's a fun movie i mean it's not like you know it's not like great acting or anything it felt it felt like a marvel movie that's what i'm that's the only way to compare it where yeah. it's like there's action, it's little like comedy. There's you know, little nostalgia going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully we'll, we'll get some cool, cool stuff coming out. I think they need to make a a, a, a remake, bring in, uh, make it a rap too. Just kidding. <laughs> I I cannot wait. Like if I had it because I ordered it on Blu-ray. By the way, yeah. I think I mentioned it. I look forward to going and watching them in the theater room. I, I, I 
just love that soundtrack. I never, you know, realized what, what a cool, I oh, wish yeah. I could put some. That's a good one. Oh, man. No, I'm not saying it's a good movie. That's a good question, right? Yeah. yeah. Armando, yeah. what I saw didn't look anything like. Like Lee Major? Nothing. Yeah. Right? So I, I, I'm only introduced, I only was introduced to the fall guy because actually my uncle Carlos, who's, who's in the comments, he was here tonight because of the $6 million man. And because of the $6 million man, you know, I was like, Oh, Lee majors, right? Lee majors is freaking awesome. So of course the fall guy was awesome. Um, so that's, that was my introduction to him, but. Speaking of the, of the fall guy. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah, I just got that. What? Got it out of California. Real close to you, by the way, Gabe. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. When you get in it, you already got it? I already got it. Yeah. It's badass. Me and Denise went riding in it. And this is similar to what we're going to do to it. Badass. Yeah, That's dude. I love it. I, I just, I love those old shit. You know what you, you should get? And I've seen a really, like, some really good ones is Marty's. Toyota, like the, the black the black truck. Oh, I, I I've been searching forever for it. No, I've been looking and looking, and you just it's. But uh, the guy reached out, which is, he's a really nice guy, and um, we're gonna actually have his truck there. I think it's at the body shop. Um, he's got the DeLorean also, but he's he's building the the truck. The thing is, is his is a newer one. Most people wouldn't know it's the, the it's the same body style, but it's the IFS suspension where the original truck was a Leaf Spring eighty five. So a lot of people wouldn't know that, but yeah, but yeah, that's that ass. I just there's something about looking over that square hood, old. Yeah. You know what I mean? Could you imagine having your Camaro again? Just that that feeling of real steel. <laughs> yeah, real steel. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Go up next to one of these little little electric cars and just you know rev it up real loud, you know. We almost got stranded um, uh, last week, the week before, because we, my wife has an electric. Remember the the VW uh, electric car, yeah. and uh, for some reason it didn't charge when we went to Disneyland. And on our way back, we only had like I think I don't know. It said something like eleven miles. And we found a charging station, but then the charger wasn't working. Oh, so by the time like we got there and figured it out, we only had like three miles left or something. It was like super. Is it pretty accurate? accurate? Will it die in three miles, or you don't know? It'll, no, it'll tell you. It'll be like like low battery, low battery, low battery. But like the next one was like ten miles away. Yeah. So we're oh. oh, and then it was like midnight. We had the kids in the back seat. Like we're like, what are we gonna do? Like. We're going to have to call like your mom, like my mother-in-law or somebody to come pick us up in the middle they of have the charging trucks that can come in like a triple A or no, like a, that could bring I mean, you a gas can. They could, like, uh, yeah, they could jump start it, but I don't think it would be enough to get to a charging station. I right? gotcha. So yeah, that's, that's been, and then today, well, this weekend is the first time that I've taken my Camaro, like mm -hmm. on a, on a long trip. Yeah. And I love, dude, I, filled, nice. I filled it up. It last, I mean, it went all the way there, all the way back to like Disneyland back, and then didn't even have to worry about it because I'm like, yeah. just go get some gas. The gas station. Does, does the door still work good and everything? Oh yeah, badass. Are you gonna hang on to that car? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm telling you because I sold. I had a '69. Remember I told you, and that was like one of my biggest regrets ever, like selling it. I'm like, man, why did I yeah. sell? it? That's unbelievable. My, was, my wife loves the '69. Yeah, and I, I mean, I was younger, so I mean, like, you know, I and but I appreciated it back then. I yeah. think it was just more of like convenience, needed the money, and you know, I ended up selling it. Biggest mistake. So, and then I had a you know a Mustang too that I ended up selling. I'm like, I should have just kept them all. Like, I didn't need to sell them. It yeah. was just selling them just because they would take up space. So I'm like, eh. But yeah, this one I'm yeah, this one I don't the bumblebee I won't sell. Okay. That's good. The, I, I don't know what it is, Gabe, but it's I've got it really bad with the nostalgia. The this old school 80s stuff, just anything childhood doesn't even have to be Star Wars, anything nostalgia related, I'm just really digging lately. Yeah. 
there was a there was a meme that I saw out there that said it was um that kids I is like the way so the Wonder Years were aired right it, it was aired in the like eighties right yes Looking back at the fifties and the sixties right yeah. so and it was like <clears throat> you'd be the same as how kids are looking back to the year 2000. Yeah. Was, that's, dude, that's insane to me. Like, yeah. because right. Like even just watching the wonder years, it's like, man, like it felt so long ago, even in the eighties and the nineties, like the fifties just felt like yeah, different. And then now these kids now they're like in the two thousands. Yeah. I think even, I think it was my niece or someone, you know, cause my birthday's on Tuesday, by the way. Um, so holy crap, your birthday, yeah, my birthday. I'm gonna be, Dude, I'm gonna be 40. Can't, I can't. <laughs> I'm gonna you be celebrate 40. your birthday every six months. It seems like you just had it. It seems like it. that's how fast time flies. Oh, these days. Uh, man, yeah. it's 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 light speed right now. It's yeah, crazy. man. No, yeah, my birthday's on Tuesday. So, you know, we were talking, and I think one of my nieces is like, Oh, what year were you born? I was like, Oh, 1981. And then she said, so like, she's like, oh, so you were born in the 1800s? <laughs> oh, that's good. What the hell? I wasn't born in the 1800s, all right? Yeah. Hey, um, so do, do you have a, any word on the, the shuttle, your Titanium shuttle? I mean, I guess the kits are shipping now, but the painted ones, I have no idea, man. Gotcha. I don't know. Uh -huh. um, I do. I, I did get some crazy cool, like, updates from from efx and that i'm i'm excited i think everyone in this chat is going to be excited um in the near future so yeah it's 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 exciting so i know a lot of people are like ah, i'm not collecting like the Man yeah. well, the mandalorian stuff i think people are collecting but yeah i think some some original trilogy stuff's coming and some that really awesome. some cool can you, yeah, can, cool you can you hit if it's mcquery version or um, I I can't I can't hint towards anything. Um, hey, speaking of McCoy, did you guys see my post on my Darth Vader helmet display? I finally, huh? That came beautiful, man. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, I was really happy with it. Next, I'm going to build the display. I was going to do it for the three PO, oh. but I'm actually going to do it for my <laughs> um, Joe Johnston. Um, Thanks to you, Gabe, I wouldn't end up getting this thing. But that Battlestar Galactica um, Cylon prototype helmet. No. I'm going to put a, it's cool. I'm going to put a light in it because when you yeah. light, the eyes will light up. Yeah. Because it's a, a red gel, a movie gel that yeah. they used in there. So I look forward to it. I've got all the display cases already. Solo Fett, the Darksaber is coming out on Monday. Um, signature edition, Katie Sackhoff. There's going to be a hundred of those. There's going to be 500 LEs. And if you're part of the Star Wars, the Master Replica Star Wars group, um, it's like the Master Replica is an EFX group. They're going to have a special uh, like availability for a plaque um, with um, Giancarlo uh, Espiritu um, instead of Katie Sackhoff. So like... I, what I would say is join that group if, if you're interested in that, because then you'll be able to kind of choose what you want. Like if you want Katie Sackhoff, you want bo -Katan on the signature, or you want um, Moff Gideon. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, so that's that's that. Um, like I said, yeah, they. I got a picture of something really cool that's going to be coming out. That's um, yeah, I'm I'm excited. Um, and what else i got i got some other hold on i was trying to trying to remember what what other news i could share um yeah no that's it yeah yeah there hasn't been a lot of crazy crazy release things huh has hasbro been releasing much the, the toy line of star wars toy line not really right i don't know. yeah i think so they just released i think some stuff this week Okay. Uh, with uh, because they they had this Lucasfilm event in New York. Oh. 
and where they like lit up the Empire State Building. And it was like a whole mm -hmm. toy. Yeah, it's been huge on the internet. People have been sharing that with me. What's yeah. up with you? And it was a merch, it was a merchandise um event. And I was a little bitter because I was like, wait a second, like they're inviting like influencers and stuff. And I'm like, I didn't get an invite. And it's, <laughs> and it's and it's merchandise though. Like I get it, like for cosplay, you know what I mean? Cause like, you know, I don't I don't cosplay, so I'm not gonna like, you know, I'm not gonna be there in a suit or anything. But this one was just a normal one, like it was a normal event. I don't know, dude. You're willing to TikTok. I think you'd be willing to cosplay as well. But... <laughs> eventually, man, eventually. Yeah, right. Yes. Um but yeah, no, actually this time around I I, I kind of was a little little upset. So I did have I, I reached out to to our friend at Lucasfilm. And I oh, was just like, Yeah, yeah. And I, I you know me, I'm not usually like that. But yeah. I'm like, like, dude, like I I turn down like free shit like on a weekly basis because Which it's unlicensed. Trying to be yeah, because it's unlicensed. And here I am being all loyal and all that, and I'm seeing influencers that like don't yeah. care about that stuff and they're you know they're getting that and then basically what it was it, it was a is a disney um retail event so he was like lucasfilm really has nothing to do with it it's yeah. the disney merch you know the the retail side sets that up yeah. so but he's gonna hopefully he's gonna try to that's one thing i wish disney would do is come out with a new version but keep the story real yeah. And don't go off track and make another black hole. I think that'd be cool. That's dangerous, man. Yeah, I know. You're I'm right. Sorry. You're right. You're you're right. I was the one preaching a little bit ago about don't ruin something, and you're you're right. Yeah. Um, but I just love that so much, and I just you know I love those characters, and yeah, we can't wait to show everybody uh, Bob when we get the droid yeah. from McMaster. Well, what's what's interesting about that, and what's interesting about my conversation, and I could I could share part of it is part of the conversation that I brought up was was my handle, and I think that's that's what Disney has has a problem with because Ooh. I'm yeah because I'm using the word Star Wars in it ah oh. yeah and it's it's kind of like their I think it's kind of a policy to not to not promote channels or like handles that are basically like i don't know maybe they're claiming or they think we're claiming that we're star like actual star wars like part of them or something right, right, like, right. obviously a fan account and obviously i work with all these licensed companies and the lucasfilm rep but again it's disney disney has its whole separate pr like yeah the whole thing so yeah i think it's i think it's getting fixed so we'll see hopefully yeah. i can well, I, I wish nothing but luck and success to EFX. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited. I, I'm excited. Yeah, that's funny. I'm sorry. Just the BSW replicas, right? I mean, I, I honestly have been thinking about it. I'm like, man, should I, should I rebrand? Should I change? But mm. would they I, still? I don't know. I don't. Well, and I've even had problems with the word replicas. Because every every once in a while, like on especially on TikTok, um, it, it doesn't like the word replicas because it thinks like bootlegs, right? Which rightfully yeah. so. Like if you say anything else, like Louis Vuitton replicas, ooh, yeah. Nike replicas, ooh, you know what I mean? Yeah, Star yeah. replicas. Yeah, yeah. I Are they am I selling bootlegs? Like what am I selling? Yeah, like yeah, exactly. So I could see that. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe you never know. Maybe next week it'll say Star Wars at something else. Yeah. But no. Nah, and it's, it's it's crazy. You just yeah. That's true. But you just keep doing your thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just keep doing your thing. We'll figure it out. Yeah. But, so yeah. We'll well, cool. Well, should we should we call it a night? Did we have enough controversy for the night tonight? Yeah, I think it was, it was pretty damn good actually. <laughs> I think it was that there was a, a hug me, a hug me, little teary eyed moment at the end. Yeah, they're healthy. They're healthy, healthy. I think somebody said that here. Let me let me go back. I think it, it puts it it puts things in perspective on both sides. I think. No, I mean it's just yeah. I mean that too, but I think it's it's being able to to have 
conversations and not have there you go here it is darth wizzy wizard adult conversations with civility yeah that's what it is we don't have to disagree but that yeah. doesn't mean that you're a you know shitty person like on yeah. either side like mm-hmm. you could argue about it and we don't have to agree at the end of the day but I just think Trump could wield a lightsaber like nobody. Who? <laughs> Who can? Uh, me. Well, we're gonna. Well, we're gonna get a, a Chewbacca, a, a Wookie, lightsaber wielding character in the Acolyte. So. Oh, look, we are right. Look forward to that. Oh no! That's shit. what I. That's what I have an issue with, because you know I'm not a big Chewbacca fan. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like, I don't think Chew. I don't think Wookies should be Jedi's. But so does he? Uh, shaving? They got a. Does he have to wear a suit? Or did you yeah. see it? Yeah, he's in the trailer. Oh shit! Yeah, man. <sighs> Is he wearing a red suit? No, not a red suit. He's uh, wearing a Jedi. A Jedi costume. Like a robe? I'm just kidding. Yes, yes. What's What's next? A Yoda show? No. You know, I'm oh, not that'd a, be badass. you know I'm not a Yoda fan. Hey, you know what would be really cool if they did the a Yoda the a Yoda when like when remember when he hauled ass and left and went and landed on this planet by himself? Mm-hmm. It'd have been cool just seeing him hanging out and building his little hut and just the sound of the water and the the flying creatures and shit and the rain. Just Fun shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm serious, dude. I, I don't know what it is. I know I've said it many times on our show, but that scene in Empire when when they when he was on the on the swamp when Luke it was him and, yeah. and R2, dude, it was just I, such I, a, a relaxing the sound and the, the sounds and the I just freaking love that. Yeah. You know, it's funny that like I I I kind I know what you're talking about because I feel that way like for some reason like whenever it's like raining like thunderstorm hard, oh, yeah. it's like this weird like overwhelming like not overwhelming but like it's like a comfy feeling like it's like, it is for me too. No, I remember being in my bedroom as a you know when I was like twelve or fourteen and. You know, remember in high school, girls absolutely could not ever come into my bedroom, dude. It'd be like, you know, 40-year-old virgin all over. I, I couldn't have that. But, you know, I mean, there wasn't a, a – you could not see any part of the wall. It was nothing but posters and Star Wars, and all my ships were hanging from the strings and all that stuff. But the rain, when it would rain outside, I remember building a Star Destroyer um, out of wood that I'd go steal off the construction sites and, Mm-hmm. I made a badass. It, was, it would come out, hang over my bed and raining outside. I just love that sound of the rain. You know, it's awesome. Yeah, that's the one thing. Like my my kids grew up with like the the white noise and like the rain sounds. Like ever since they're like babies, yeah. we'd play it for them, and it'd make them sleep. But yeah. see, it makes me sleepy. I'm like, yes, a hundred percent. And Armando, but I have when I write or I'm doing something, I'm working at night. I'll throw that that on on YouTube and just oh really the dig yeah it's just the, there's, the background there's a whole there's a whole thing on Disney Plus have you seen those no yeah there's like a whole like if you scroll down into the Star Wars section and you start going down there's like a section where it's like like s- smooth sounds of Star Wars and there's like a lot of different for those of you vintage Star Wars fans I've got a we're, I'm just waiting for a time to open up for a guest that has an incredible vintage Star Wars collection. And I look forward to showing everybody on the show. So yeah. it's always fun when we get into these collections, Gabe. Huh? Yeah. So <laughs> my hiccups are back. No, no, no. Oh, uh, that's funny. Yeah, you did good. That, hey, the peanut butter, it, it was, it was, yeah, but, you were right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or maybe the controversial chat. No. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, Stephen. I thought that last week's strawberry shortcake episode was controversial. That's hilarious. Hey, but real quick, yeah. So everybody gave I, I 
I kind of lost lost it at the end of the show last week. Did could the viewers not see what I was reading, or could they see? Wait, you lost. Did you see in the chat what, what me and Stephen and Carlo and Denise were seeing, or no? I mean, unless you guys didn't end the stream. Yeah. By the way, how did you guys end the stream? I just freaking hung up. <laughs> what do you mean, like? But like, did you push end stream? No. <laughs> uh -uh. Nobody did. No, just hung up. I just hit the X. No, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. It's one of these days I'm gonna learn. You know, what I'm I mean? gonna have to go back. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go check that out in the end part. Um. Oh, by the way, vintage figures. I just picked up another 12. So I'm I'm around, I think I'm around like 30, 38 figures now. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there yeah. slowly but surely. I'm like trying to get all of them, man. I'm hooked though now. Like now that I'm like on a roll. I know. I get excited when you're doing that. Hey, yeah. and our, I want to thank Armando. He he. Well, I kind of do, and I kind of don't. But he, he sent me a uh, a link that I don't want to share with anybody because I don't want him to see it. No, but seriously, it's a it's a, um, an auction, or it's not an auction, but it, it's a um, it's an original twelve back carded display of the. You know, that's like the one Grail that I don't have. You know and. Oh. That and a couple other headers, you know, and I've just, it's expensive though, you know what I mean? But it's actually a little bit more reasonable than what they're normally going. I've seen them like 20 grand, yeah. but it's got the tray in it and stuff, you know? But I, that's why when we were talking to Gus, I'm like, hey, Gus, can you go back one scroll back? Remember, I, I love seeing that, that original display boxes, man. It's crazy. So, but yeah, so how many figures in are you? Yeah, like I said, I'm like at 30, I think like 37, 38. Technically, because I am I got two um, Royal Guards. Yeah. Just because like I've been buying them in little lots. Every once in a while I'll look on eBay and I'm like, ooh, like this lot has like three that I'm missing, but like two that I already have. So I'll just buy it just for those three. Like, because then I'll just calculate the price. I'm like, all right, if I get it for like 20 bucks, you know, separately, and this auction's like 40 something. It's like I got them for like 10 bucks each, you know? Yeah, that's cool. So, I yeah, I'm not, I'm not really focusing on like, I, I want them to be, you know, not super mint or anything like that, but, and, and not even 100% complete. Like, I'm honestly not even that, you know, I don't really care that much. Um, at this point right now, I'm collecting, I just want to just get them all. Now, once I got them all, then maybe I'll start replacing them one by one, like, you know, for like a better, a better. Yeah, our friend Joey, the Padawan collector, he, he does that same thing. Yeah. He does it. I just, I really, really appreciate how he does his, he's just fantastic at that vintage. He's really owned it, I think. So yeah. um, I want to do a shout out to my friend, Jim Q. Um, everybody remembers he did the laser blast sculpts for me for the, the aliens. He's building me the ship now, and it's badass. So, um, no, we, that would be cool. We but forgot to talk about that. Big shout out to him, and I look forward to showing um, the ship when it gets here. The details, yeah. it's badass. I can't wait. Yeah, we we forgot to. I mean, we let five minutes. We'll we'll end it at two hours. Did you see that? There's going to be a new Alien movie coming out. No. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. Jimmy Cameron doing it? I don't really know. Let me see. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, they just announced it. Let me see. Uh, oh, there's actually a trailer. You guys want to watch what? it? Yeah. Are yeah. well, you well, you're looking that up on a? I don't know if it's a. Oh yeah, that's original. Let's see. Right. We'll Is we'll end the, we'll end the show with that. Hold on. New alien trailer. Do you think it's legit? It's really a real one? I think so. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> 
Dude, when is that coming out? Okay. Yeah, it's here. August. Mmm, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And Beetlejuice Part Two. Let me let's bring that up. Are you? Did you? Do you like Beetlejuice? Did you like? Part yeah, one? I mean, it was okay. It was you know a movie to watch for sure, but it, I wasn't like, oh my gosh. My wife, I think, really enjoyed that. And I think Sideshow released some Beetlejuice stuff. Yeah, so here, let me bring up the... I don't know if any of you guys are six-scale collectors, but that new Dubac is badass. Have you seen the new Dubac on the slideshow? I haven't, no. Hot Toys is releasing a new Dubac with the, uh, the Sand uh, Trooper. Oh, the Sand Trooper? Yeah, it's pretty badass looking. That's my favorite piece of all my six-scale. Well, I don't know. I, I got some pretty cool Dubac? Oh. All right, let me let me bring that up. Hold on. Different actors, or is it like a? No, oh, it's all the. Huh? It's the original actors. Yeah. Ooh. So well, uh, the original but Winona Ryder and um, Michael Keaton and the mom. I don't, I don't remember her name. Um, there we go. Oh wow, Johnny, that's cool. <laughs> And we want to go. What happened? Did you freeze? Am I frozen? Are you frozen? Something happened. Gabe is frozen. Okay, Marcel. I was going to say, man, he's not moving at all. Well, I'm still here. We're still alive, though, right? Good. So let's get back into this accolades movie. Just kidding. I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> oh, just kidding. There he is. He's coming. Maybe. So those of you that are in the chat, I, I really um, hope to see you guys. Uh, May the 4th, if you can make it down, um, it's going to be a really fun event. So you like that, John? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Ryder <right in> Mondo. <laughs> All right, let's just keep talking about it. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. But, um, yeah, I don't know if he's going to have, have a problem getting back on. We'll, we'll check and see. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh, man. Sorry, guys. What we, happened? Oh, okay. we, we were just talking about the accolades movie. Anyway, so. <laughs> what did I miss? What did I miss? Oh, man. Um. <laughs> That's Wait, did did at least the trailer play or no? Did we just no? It, it froze also. Oh, I think my internet might have just like glitched. Yeah, <laughs> I had to say three times. Yeah, that's what happened. I started watching it and yeah, um, that's funny. It's really nice being in this room again. It's been a little while. So. I like that, dude. That's crazy how big that is. I, I it's still every time you you Isn't show me. Cool? Shocking, man. That's crazy. Yeah, thank you, buddy. It's very, very fragile. From here, like from our video, it's like yeah, it's not big at all. It doesn't look like there would be that much difference. But yeah. then when you go walk back there, and if I were to walk there, yeah, like it's like this big, and then yours is like yeah, 
that chicken walker studio skill. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I've been waiting for um, some models. I, I actually picked up, Gabe, I don't know if you did or if you care, but I picked up the Colin Cantwell Star Destroyer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Salzo's going to build it for me. Nice. Yeah, I'm actually going to, I'm commissioning uh, Chris Benware is going to build me the the uh, Joe Johnston at at. Have you seen his? Mm -mm. Wow, it's, it's badass. It looks like a, the sand crawler kind of. Yeah. It's a pretty cool piece. So, yeah. But yeah, man, we're, we're straight up. We're a little over two. So, yeah. it's, been, it's, it's been a good show, like always. And I mean, uh, let me just give you a hint because you're saying, you know, about Studio Skull. It's because somebody's asking, yeah, EFX is coming out with two Studio Scale things soon. So, really? I'll give you that since we're ending. Yeah. Nice. But, well, sounds really good. Sounds good. Well, everybody, it's always good um, having you guys in the chat. And thanks for chiming in and, and uh, being a part of the conversation always. You know, we do care. So, Gabe, love you, my brother. And we will see you guys. You gonna be here next Saturday, Gabe? You think you're gonna, you're gonna be here? <laughs> and I look, and the, the reason I, I I think I will. I think I will. But I might be in a hotel room. You know, I might I might have to pull one of those because WonderCon is this weekend. Next oh, week. yeah. Okay. So I think we'll, we'll we're probably gonna go maybe Friday and Saturday, and then but Sunday we're gonna go it's Sunday too. But then Sunday's Easter. Didn't realize that. Yes. Very cool. But so if I am, I'll be in a hotel room. Sounds good. I get it, man. And thanks for the all the, the support, Gabe, of what you did with the with um, the dinner with the stars thing. It means a lot, dude. It's badass. So. of course, man. Anytime. All right, all right guys. Well, good night, everybody. Jeez. Armando. <laughs> all right. Give me a second. Let me let me put the ending on. Oh, it's weird, kid. Now let's blow this thing.